Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Monday. That means it's a pool video. It's an actual full week and not, you know, one of these partial weeks. Didn't get interrupted by some crazy guy attacking the channel or anything. So we've got a normal week this week. It's awesome. Bought a couple cars, went to a couple yard sales. It was a great weekend. Give me just a couple minutes, get everything turned on, get cleaned up. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Max. I'm the fast talking flipper. Angie's my better half. She's getting ready for the day. We're uh, going, kind of going two different directions today. Today's a teaching day. So I have to get into the college this afternoon. I got a whole bunch of stuff to do this morning. And uh, yeah, this morning. That means we're going to be out here in a shed. We are resellers. Let me get focused. We are resellers and we buy locally here in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati area. I'm actually in Southeast Indiana, but I'm 30 minutes from downtown Cincinnati. So I claim it as home in the Cincinnati area. And we buy locally yard sales, estate sales, thrift stores, that kind of thing. And we sell it online for more, usually eBay for a big profit. And today is the outline of what happened over the weekend and uh, what we've sold over the weekend and what we get into over the weekend. So we do kind of a recap, that kind of thing. So welcome to all the new faces that are here i appreciate you tuning in this is um this is more of what the channel is about if you're in because of some of the shorts because we had a short blow up over the weekend uh for us it's huge 125,000 views that's pretty awesome uh and we're gonna keep that up i'm gonna try to do some documenting of wild things that i find when i'm out at yard sales um not just the stuff at the yard sales but like getting to the yard sales and that's what i documented there was we were at a state sale in the middle of nowhere kentucky and uh, getting back to the highway, we found some rather interesting stuff that you would not normally find on the beaten path because that's just kind of the way it is. So um, that's going to be fun to call it adventures and yard sellings. But uh, today I have 12 items going out of here for $948 and 48 cents. Now this is um, this is because that's the number right there. 12 for 948. I don't know what that uh, that breaks down to. Math is escaping me right now. Uh, because we had the issue of last week, you know, some people getting in here and saying that, you know, my store was terrible and blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's $79 and four cents per order. Now that's inclusive of shipping. So, you know, don't get, uh, don't think that that's not, that's inclusive of shipping, but shipping is going to be somewhere between, we'll call it $10 even. So that's $69 per item that's sold to go out of here. Uh, the issue of last week was people were saying, you only sell three or four items a day. Yeah, I do. You know, sometimes we sell eight and it's uh, it's great, but um, we have set our store up and we've changed our store so that we don't have to spend an hour shipping on 35 orders over the weekend. You know, that's that's not fun. We know we can all admit that shipping is not fun. Uh, we I have 12 items to ship and they're going to be pretty easy items to ship. And I did almost a thousand dollars, nine forty eight forty eight. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good average sale uh, average sale price. ASP is what that stands for. Uh, uh, average sales price and that's a pretty good ASP and knowing our rate of return on average we pay about ten dollars per item if you take every item in here that I have you know if you look at this uh this EQ versus this jacket and you average them out every item that comes in we pay ten dollars for because that's how you know we look at things so if you average it all out we sold sixty nine dollars we pay ten dollars for everything there's 12 of them i got 120 dollars in expenses um we'll call it 120 dollars in shipping that's 240 dollars of this 948 uh probably have another 13 percent in fees so we'll call it another 120 dollars it's 360 dollars out of that 948 to make math easy i'm gonna say it's 348.48 just to make math easy for the uh for the numbers now we're probably a little low probably a little high it's all right you know we're just guesstimating on stuff that means there's 600 dollars in profit there out of 12 items, $600 in profit out of 12 items over the weekend. And I wasn't here this weekend. I was busy out running, doing stuff. Now we'll call 30% tax that we pay to the man. And uh, it's on $600, that's $180. That's $420 in my pocket. That's straight cash in my pocket that we made on stuff over the weekend, just random stuff. And you will see some of this stuff is absolutely amazing. Some of it's stupid. Uh, some of it doesn't wasn't worth selling, but it's been listed for so long we just left it up. And then some of it's like, wow, I can't believe you got $200 out of that. So that's, that's the way we do things. But that's the point. You don't need to sell and you don't need to have 
I won't use the number, but you don't need to have 10,000 items in the store to uh, to have a successful store. The way you would need 10,000 items in the store to have a successful store is if your sell-through rate is very low and not very low, but on the lower end, if your sell-through rate's on the lower end and you're that then you need to con you need to multiply that by your average sales price to get where you need to be for selling, you know, for your target goals. Now, I say where you need to be. That's different for everybody, and only you can judge that. What makes it look successful for you? What makes you feel like you're getting your money's worth? I would say that having a 10,000 item store isn't a great idea unless you're full time, but what do I know? Because I don't know your particular situation. So a 10,000 item store would be very difficult for somebody to run, unless it's like media, where you have CDs and books and that kind of thing. I can see where that would be a lot easier to run than it would be a 10,000 item store like me, where we've got shoes and clothes and media and knickknacks and patty wax and give a dog a bone, those kind of things. You know, I've got a, a, a lava lamp, I've got a four foot, uh, the four foot stormtrooper over there, that kind of stuff. Imagine if you had 10,000 items like that. That's a lot of space. That's, 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 that's expense. It's going to be hard to do. So just know where you need to be on your stuff and how it looks. But for us, we have a, an average sales price of about 60 bucks. Uh, every order that goes out, every cha-ching we hear on eBay, we know we have about $60, give or take, coming in. And they, we know that we paid $10 for the item because we've been doing this long enough, we can average it all out. And we know our sell-through rate on our store is that we can turn our store over about every five months. That's where, you know, it's it just says that you have so many items in, so many items out, and you can turn your store over every five months. Um, that works for us. It keeps us right around the $30,000 every 90-day mark. And if you don't believe me, I will show you because people were doubting that as well uh, last week. So um, the $30,000 monthly or 90 day there you go that's where we're at uh 909 listed 535 sold and 29598 for our 90 day and that's actually down because we had a terrible week and a half so you know it's not as high as it was we saw our highest has been like 37,000 which is pretty darn good because that means we were ch ch chugging right along so that was pretty good but um to get out of the numbers and get into the stuffs Let's get into the stuff. So it looks like I sold some good stuff, man. Man, I sold a lot of tools this weekend. And that goes back to my point of selling tools is a good idea. Toolbox. Sold a seven-piece screwdriver set. Blue Point. We all know about tools. Blue Point, Snap-on, Mac, Matco, Cornwell. That kind of stuff. Those are your quality tools. Not, you know, those aren't the only ones. I would add Bosch to that to some extent. Excuse me. I'm going to get rid of this. I think that sold too. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. I want to get rid of that toolbox because I don't like how it's just chilling out in the middle there. But this screwdriver set, new in the box, uh, right there. $59.98 on that guy, full price. I'm going to see if this thing sold or not real quick because I want to make sure that I'm not getting it confused with something else. Do -do 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 it did. And it sold this uh, little tire pressure gauge. Since I already had it out, I went ahead and got rid of that. $19.98 for the tire pressure gauge, that little guy there. Also blue point. $19.98. So that's gone. And I can move along, moving right along, back to my stuffs. Felix the Cat Toy Box 1. It's right here. TB1. This sold quick. Angie just listed this last week, and we're surprised that it uh, it sold as quick as it was because it did not have a good sell-through rate. But when you price things right, you will be the next one to sell, and that's what we did. $19.99 on that. I think, um, I think she mentioned something about we were definitely the lowest-priced one out there. So $19.99, and it sold. J4. I'm going for a vintage Pepsi-Cola drinking machine uh clock this was man we still have a home phone just because my aunt need i say more she's old uh she's 70 gonna be 75 this year and she insists on having a home phone so we still have a home phone so we were able to hook this up and test it and it's just like wow i can't believe people still use these things 
more power to them, but uh, not my thing. So there it is, a Pepsi clock. It lights up up here, which is kind of cool, but the ringer is like annoying as hell. Um, and it works, but that little guy had it listed. Now this was another thing. Somebody said in the comments, like, you're very misleading. You don't say when you sell something sold on an offer, you don't say what the offer was. Yes, I do. I say what the offer was every time. Maybe I mess it up every now and again, but I say what the offer was, what it sold for, because the screen I'm looking at tells me, it doesn't tell me what the sale, the, the original listing price was. It only sells, tells me what it sold for, so I have no way to say the wrong price, really. I'm, I might mess up the number because I'm an idiot, but short of that, I have no way. Um, what the the cop we throw, or the screenshot we throw up on the screen, because eBay only allows you to see certain things, and where we go into eBay, sometimes it won't show us anything less than the original listing price as it sold. So I say it here, but that comp might show up. So I know we listed this for $24.99, but it sold for $20 on an offer and it sold quick because I was like, well, if I've got somebody on the, the hook, they're nibbling. I'm going to go ahead and yank that hook into their lip and I'm going to you know, get them right in here. Next one, Disney e or Soft Fleece uh, C2. Huh. I didn't know I had any clothes in C2. I'm going to have to put you guys down because this is up top and I don't want to smash myself in the face with it. No, I'm a liar. C2 is not up top. C2 is right here. I'm just an idiot and can't read. And this is it. So this is Eeyore. I, I know I wouldn't have paid anything more than a dollar for this. I think I grabbed it at a yard sale. <clears throat> I know I grabbed it at a yard sale. I can remember the yard sale. I just don't remember if I paid a dollar or 50 cents. But the Eeyore hoodie, kind of cute. Uh, $18.95. $18.95. A little confused by that one because with shipping and everything, it was $36.47. Finally sold this guy. Man, this was a great, great buy. I bought a, a big bin full. It's a Tonka Toys. Early, early Tonka Toys. This is the first model of Tonka that was ever produced. But uh, I bought a big bin full of... That is not what I thought it was. A big bin full of early press toys thinking that oh they're all beat up they're rusty they're crusty they're no good i did not look and see where it was they're no good so they're not going to be worth anything and i gave five bucks for the the, the bin and five dollars for a second one where did i put this it says c3 c3 and i put it in a bin and i didn't think they would sell for anything i didn't think they were going to be worth much of anything and you'll see here in a second boy i was wrong this guy, and you'll see, like, this is insane. Look at how just crusty and gross that is. It is not in good shape, but it just goes to show, if you know what you're looking for, and I did not, I had no idea, don't get me wrong, I had no idea what I was looking for. It was completely luck. But there were, like, five or six big toys like that in this bin, um, including this one back here, and this one I gave five bucks for on its own. This one right here, um, you see that that's that guy, he's in way better shape. I figured he would be worth a ton of money and he's worth a decent amount, but not like this. This guy alone, this early Tonka, somebody's probably gonna restore him, 100 bucks. Now I had it listed for 139.99, I think. And I was, I knew I was high on that, but there weren't many listed. There were plenty listed that were in great shape or better shape, and they were listed for hundreds of dollars. But uh, I knew that there were none listed in this condition, so I went a little high on that, thinking I would get some traction, and eventually I did. But a um, hundred dollars on that guy, going out of here. So that's kind of cool. I sold a watch in E3. Um, no, you did not. Oh, here's a topic putting like items in the same bin. I sold a watch in E3. You can see there's three different watches. And I have no idea which of those three it is. So this is how you accidentally grab the wrong item and ship it out. This is a 5295 Invicta Series Chronographs Quartz Blue and Black Two-Tone, 43 millimeter, 5295, 5295, a 5295. How long have we had this? A long, long? It sold for good money too. A 5295. So that's what I'm looking for, 5295. 9418, nope. Nope, 5295. 
5295 right there so you have to know um personally i and i think angie listed these and that's fine she listed them like that because she's gonna beat me up if i uh if i harp on her personally when i list stuff like this that's the same item when i go to to put it in a bin i find different bins for them so that i know that I, I can't accidentally grab the wrong one i can't think that I, I have the right one if it's in a different bin because you know i'm not looking in the other bin i'd had to be completely wrong on the bin and completely wrong on the item too so this particular one though we got these i believe we got these i know we got these at the pittsburgh yard sale or in the yard sale pittsburgh um, auction where we had a whole bunch of stuff that we got uh for a pretty decent amount and um I don't know. I would say we probably got five dollars into it, maybe. But uh, sold for one forty nine ninety eight. One forty nine ninety eight on that guy. That is a good sale. Another set of tools. Man, we had some really good sales over the weekend. Followed up by like a seven dollar sale, which is <laughs> it's great. Uh, this is a plier set. I'm just gonna reach down and grab it. My back is not what it once was. Blue point plier set. This big guy. Uh, gonna go out of here just like that. There you go. Five piece plier set. BPL 501. Blue point pliers. $89.95 for that guy going out of here. Then some video games. Video games. Lego. Media 4. A lot of six Lego video games. Um, they've been listed for a while and I think we had them listed for $19.99. Took an offer of $15 on them just to get them going. Man, my video games are slacking. We need to go find some video games. That's the good thing about yard sale season is you will stock up on media. Over the winter, we have sold most of our media, which is great. So $15 plus ship on those. Um, it's great to sell it all, but then when you know it comes time for Christmas, you gotta watch what you have going because people are gonna want that stuff. Uh, I got a self-powered solar crank radio on D2. D2. That's going to be out of here. So I'm looking forward to yard sale season because I can go out and source more. Um, I need to make a focus on keeping our video game selection up. Ooh, this is much bigger than I remember it being. But it was cool. I feel like we got this at the, um, the rummage sale, maybe. The pet rummage sale that we usually go to once, twice a year. Which should be coming up next month. Oh boy. I love that one. Look that guy. $29.95. I know we got it somewhere cheap. I don't remember where. I think we might have $5 into it. Maybe. Maybe 5 bucks. But it's just a little um, emergency radio. You know, when the power's out and everything, you can just crank it up and get the radio in. Next one is our uh, item of the week. Week, week, week. Pete, thank you for buying this. This is a 1999 Nomad Cologne by Crabtree and Evelyn. Apparently, it is a rare bottle. We just got this. I wouldn't say in. I think we, I don't. Angie knew exactly where we got it from, and I'm like, I have no idea what you're even talking about. Um, is it this guy? Yeah, it is that one. It's it's. Um, you can list colognes and perfumes that are not full. You have to list them in the collectible category. You have to list them in the collectible category. You cannot list them in a regular category. I need to smell this because I don't understand. I have no idea. I mean, it smells decent. That, that smells solid, actually. That does smell solid. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I see why people were happy about it. <laughs> I don't see why they're $199.99 happy about it, but I see why they're happy about it. That's um, It's one of those things, man. When you find one uh, colognes and perfumes that are out of production and they're rare, um, I know at one point um, I had a girlfriend that she really wanted from, what is it, Fredericks of Hollywood, um, one particular sexy cologne, uh, perfume that, and she, they, no, they no longer made it. And I looked it up and it was $150 to find it. And you can only find it rarely on, uh, on eBay. And it was like, I, that's when I learned that these things are worth a ton of money if they're out of, um, out of production. I have an old Chanel over there on the shelf that we have listed at $500 because it's a 1950s Chanel and they've changed the formula since then. So if somebody wants it, it's over there. Uh, my last item is Media 2. It is three Madden games. This was one that's like, oh, got an offer, whatever. We're going to settle on a number today. Three Madden games, 02, 04, 06. They bought them every other year. Like I'm not buying odd numbers for the GameCube. 
Somebody might be complete in their collection. 0206 football games, sports games typically aren't worth a ton of money. Uh, I think what NCAA 14, 13, 14 is worth a little bit. And there's a couple other uh, outliers other than that. But these three guys, $7. Going out of here, seven bucks getting out of here. So we talked about a couple of topics um, over the weekend. I had a great weekend buying cars. Here is one of them. That is a 2008. I got to get it off the trailer so I can get the trailer back because I pay by the day for that. My trailer is down. The, tra the brakes are out on it. 2008 uh, HHR Chevrolet HHR one owner car, rusty. Call it Bluetooth fenders because the fenders are falling off. Needs a little bit of uh, routine maintenance. Needs brakes all the way around. Needs struts in the front. Has an O2 light, or excuse me, a um, check engine light on for an O2 code. So it's probably got a vacuum leak is most likely what it is. And needs the window switch addressed, which we already ordered a new window switch for it. Because I know those cars, typically the uh, window switch is what goes bad. And you replace that and it fixes all the windows. Uh, needs a good cleaning because it is filthy. It sat for a couple years. The gentleman that owned it, his wife passed away and she really enjoyed the car. And when she passed, he just didn't have the enjoyment for it anymore. So it sat for a while and he finally decided to get rid of it. Uh, picked it up for $900. Had to drive to Cleveland from Cincinnati to get it. Uh, so I've got, we'll call it 12 hours of labor and going to get it. Plus the trailer, we'll call it a hundred and we'll call it $200 with gas and food and trailer. So I've got $1,100 and 12 hours into it. Uh, I'm going to have probably another, we'll call it $200 in parts because a lot of the parts I'm going to have here, but I do have to buy some new stuff like windshield wipers, like oil change stuff. Might have to buy a set of headlights for it. I already had to buy a set of front brakes. I'm going to use some of the used brakes that I have here. Um, so we're going to call $1,300 total into this car. I'm going to be able to sell it somewhere in the $3,000 to $3,500 range. I'm going to list it for $3,800, and that should be the lowest listed one on the market because it, since the body is rough, it does have a lot of rust. Um, that'll be the lowest listed one on the market, and hopefully that it will attract a buyer. So that will be good. I bought another Cobalt SS. I bought that one on Saturday. I bought this one on Sunday. Bought another Cobalt SS. I have an hour into going to get it because it was here locally. I gave $2,000 for it. It does not have a motor in it, but the motor that came with it was freshly rebuilt. And it had an aftermarket ported cylinder head from a company called ZZP that does a lot of things in the space for performance parts. The cylinder head alone, brand new, is worth $1,500. And that's without springs. That's without anything. It's just the cylinder head. So to add the springs, add the rockers, add everything to it, and it has aftermarket cams as well, that are $650 also. So all told, if somebody were to replicate that head, they're going to be spending about $3,000. Um, I have someone interested in the motor rebuilt with the head on it for $2,300. I paid $2,000 for the car. That still leaves me with a supercharger kit, the rest of the car, including the transmission. I'm going to try to sell this car as a shell for $1,000 and the transmission for $1,500. Plus, I still have the supercharger and all the other goodies to go along with it. Total, I estimate I should make about $6,000 from those from that car alone, the two thousand dollar buy. So when you couple it up, I've got thirteen, and I will have no more money into that thing. Uh, that's once it's spent, it's spent. Um, and I I use this same trailer to go get that one as I did this one. So the money spent on re re uh, recovering this one, I I've already sunk it. I don't have to spend it on that one. So we've got thirteen hundred into this, two thousand into that. That's thirty three hundred total for an estimated profit of nine thousand to ninety five hundred. It's going to take me a month or two to get that, at least. Uh, would you do it? $3,300 into $9,000. Would you do that? That is a lower profit margin than what a lot of people like to do. You know, a lot of people like to do a dollar and a 20. Okay, cool. I will turn it up and lower my profit margin because now we're talking, what, $57 to $6,200? $6, Heck yeah. Heck yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. It takes a little bit more money, but uh, that's that's how I roll with the uh, the car parts business. So I'll make a, a whole separate video about that and go more into detail about it. But um, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, talk about those couple topics. Talk about the cars and whatnot. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me uh, let me know how you do things. How was your weekend? I appreciate you being here. Like, comment, and share. Do all that kind of crazy stuff. Remember to subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. We appreciate you being here, and we will see you on the next one.